in humans episode two thoughts this episode is called those who would destroy us so spoilers for everything mcu leading up to and including this episode the show is rated tv pg and so will this vlog be every day we move further away from stan lee's light let's dive right in every episode of the show we move further away anyway so yeah um I don't know if they felt that they had to make Lockjaw so cute so that we would, like, empathize more. It feels slightly distracting to me. Because, like, you know, when, when the cars are, like, piling up, you know, I'm not, obviously I can't replicate it. But, but yeah, the, you know, it's it's got concerned dog face. And it's like, oh, poor thing. And then, you know, the it tries to... <clears throat> it, you know, it, it goes back to, to where Crystal is and tries to, to follow her command and, you know, it's, it's like, rendered unconscious and again, like, just such, such a cute dog face as, you know, just, yeah. The, no the, the little dog noises it makes don't exactly help matters. Um, yeah, one thing I do appreciate, you know, Maximus very much acting like a, a fascist, you know, there's a scene where he says, you know, put royal guards, th did he say, it's something like that on, on street corner, something like that, you know, that, that will, you know, that will put the fear in them, and then once the time is right, I will make an appearance, which he does at the end of the episode, you know, make an appearance and, and make them feel safe again. You know, yeah, fascist one-on-one. -on -one. Why did Gorgon get into the water? Like, just... Because he doesn't... When, when they rescue him, they say those feet are not for swimming... And Gorgon doesn't seem to disagree with that. Like, he doesn't say, you know, on, on Adeline they can swim, you know, because maybe it's a gravity thing, you know, gravity is different on the moon. Not that we've seen that in any of the scenes set on the moon, but whatever. I I honestly, I feel like the, the royal family... <clears throat> They're not the only ones, but they certainly keep making very questionable decisions. Just, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, uh, I'm afraid I, I keep not catching her name, but the, the, the scientist, you know, the one who is starting to piece together what's going on. You know, yeah, we have the stereotypical thing um, you know she's you know the 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 expert with the wild theory you know the audience knows they're right but other characters doubt them kind of thing which like it it's frustrating that that's that might create mistrust in scientists in real life but yeah you know she yeah she lays it all out and the the guy repeats back to her what she said and then she said I don't know if they're buddies. Because <laughs> that was the part that needed clarifying. And let's see. Yeah, Auron brings food for, for Crystal. And she attacks. And yeah, Auron leaves not long after. I mean, I, I get that being, you know, trapped puts you on edge. Yeah, I don't know. It just felt like I. Re I hope that that's what it is. I hope this is not just how she responds when someone, like. <laughs> Although I guess Aaron did enter the room without being like, yeah, she just opens the door. Okay, you know what? That might. But then her room is in like the palace, so usually it would be someone. Yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, she, you know, seemingly 
against Auron's wish wishes, she gets the the calm link and communicates, and you know is warned. This is this is a trick. She's you know she's gonna track the the old the old trick track. I I kind of like the the thing of the the yeah the character of of Eldrak. I I should refer I should say character because he is evidently sentient. You know this big face on on a stone wall, and he can teleport you wherever seemingly wherever, but it hurts. You know, that's a that's a good detail. I can imagine that's from the comics. The you know because yeah, it he's he's opening his body, you know, it's like yeah, like like surgery or something. So that yeah. And I like the you know, she she says, you know, you better not hurt me. You know, you better not do anything that hurts me. And you know he says no, and and you know she goes through, and you know he closes, and then there's a little smirk. They do a pretty decent job considering the clearly not the biggest effects budget in the world. You know, adding a just a little bit of, of personality to the the face, the the stone face he has, and yeah, you know she arrives and he didn't hurt her. He just he's just annoying her. You know he he left her in inside rock so she has to shoot her way out which like yeah I could appreciate a good passive aggressive gesture because like the, you know if 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 she tells him you know if when she comes back she's like what what was that you know he'd be like I said I wouldn't hurt you I never said anything about annoying you and <laughs> Black Bolt, yeah, um, he goes into, to like, a, um, clothing store, I guess it's pronounced, I guess that's how you say it, and, and, yeah, you know, he kind of just assumes, you know, because he's used to people doing things for him because he's the king, so he doesn't realize that, no, this, you know, you, you have to, pay for this, you know, just, yeah. Um, it, it was kind of amusing. Uh, I, I do kind of question, like, clearly he does understand. This is not one of those things where, you know, oh, it, it looks like, you know, everyone's speaking English, but that's just for the audience. No, some of these people can't understand each other, you know, something that I think was done quite well on Alolo you know where it's the the exaggerated accents always tell you what language someone is supposed to be speaking but yeah like she she clearly says you have to pay for that it doesn't look like he didn't hear her so why is he ignoring her because later on like he clearly understands what the cops are saying you know the, the when when they tell him we're going to Let's see. We're gonna take your picture and take you to lockup. Like he's, you know, clearly he understands that and he goes along with it. So, yeah, that felt kind of inconsistent. Um, yeah. So the first cop, <laughs> I kind of like, you know, Black Bolt. Like the the his his face, like Anson Mount, fantastic performance. You know, the cop tells Black Bolt exactly what to do, and he's like. Okay, um, on, on my knees, whatever you say, buddy, hey, hands behind my head, like, what, like, what, like this, you know, just, <laughs> that was legitimately kind of, you know, and let's see, yeah, you know, he, he manages to, to, to you know, defeat that, that first cop. And then some more cops arrive, and it was pretty cool when he launched one of the cop cars with just a grunt, you know. And and yeah, you know, being tased like that, yeah, I I imagine most people would grunt. But then he apparently doesn't grunt at all while being pounded by like four cops with the batons, like. 
I mean, I, I guess at most I could say, well, he wasn't expecting the tase. And, and I suppose, you know, electricity has a different impact on the human body than, uh, um, you know, regular physical force like that. I don't know, it just felt kind of weird. Also, I'm not entirely sure that I, like, if I was one of those cops, I don't think I'd continue using violence against him when, just, you know, that's what it, like, you know, back up. And, and maybe, like, you know, tell him he has to cooperate or something. You know, yeah. But yeah, um, didn't mind seeing Black Bolt, uh, you know, beating up the, the, the yeah, that first cop and, and cuffing him. A cab. And the, let's see, Maximus gets the, the, Ah, what was his name? Ah, uh, yeah, the the um, the guy from the first episode who you know got a single vision when they when they touched you know, and you know he said yeah I, I haven't had any visions since last and you know the Ma Maximus is like oh well how about now and and is like I I get what they're going for you know he's saying well you know Maximus has pieced together. You know, when Maximus touches him, the the guy gets visions of what will happen to Maximus. But it kind of played it as like a um, like a kid bro, uh, not not kid brother, older brother bullying his kid brother or something like like the you know like I'm not touching you or something like that. Just yeah. And yeah, based on the the vision, you know, he believes that the the council are all, you know, plotting, planning his death, which, yeah, really, like, it's giving Stalin, like, you know, executing his generals because he was convinced they were, you know, but, but ultimately he doesn't have them executed, he just, you know, he says, you should live by his last word, you know, the councilman he killed in episode one, last words, I guess they weren't words, they were a gargling noise, but it's still words to live by. I guess that means he doesn't want them to talk, he wants them to fear death. Again, it's just, it's kind of awkwardly written, and, and yeah. I, I honestly, I thought that he was going, as, as soon as he left, he was going to have them shot by the, the guards. I guess... I guess he'll just have them watched or something. It just he doesn't seem like he's I guess okay, wait, no, you know what? Fair enough. If he kills all of the council, that might hurt his chances of, of leading. He you know, the the specific royal family members, that's because he figures none of them will support him. You know, they're all different to, to Black Bolt. And, right, the, yeah, Medusa laid a trap for Aran, who kills a guy for touching her, which, yeah, the, that is one way to handle that situation. And the, let's see, yeah, you know, so Medusa and Aran, M and A get into some MMA. It's about wrestling, more like, but yeah, it was a it was a decent fight, and it culminates in Medusa stabbing Auron. But the, I guess, post credit scene or just last scene of the of the episode shows that Auron survived. Would Medusa not know what Auron can survive? Like she knew her well enough to piece together that. Crystal was tricked by the the apparent drop of the the communicator. So, come like, yeah. Um, lots of lots of characters on this show. You know, going back and forth between making really you know logical decisions and and not. And then, yeah, the writers really 
tip their hand by having Maximus say, you know, Black Bolt's rigid meritocracy must come to an end, or you know, some something along those lines, which like obviously, you know, meritocracy, you know, hypothetically great. I'm not sure that you know, certainly America isn't currently a meritocracy. Some of the most incompetent people have some of the most power. So, so yeah, but, you know, it's written by people who think that, you know, populists deep down hate meritocracy because, you know, powerful people like to think that they're better at things. But, you know, when you look at the actual evidence, a lot of the most powerful people... There are some very talented people who have at least some power, but yeah, a lot do not. Um, did not mean for that to rhyme, but but yeah, it's also like it can't possibly be both a meritocracy and have a royal family. Like that doesn't. If 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 you have democracy then you can have meritocracy but the the you know if you're if the leader of a place is you know like like they specifically talk about you know the let's see if i understand correctly black bolt was born to be you know royalty and so you know maximus was the the backup you know, and, and as has happened many times throughout history, yeah, because there were multiple sons, they end up fighting over who's going to, you know, and, and you know, sometimes, <clears throat> you know, people in, here in the model, modern world will, will joke, oh, why didn't they just have one son, you know, as nice as that would have been if they only did have the one son, so there wasn't that strife. We got to keep in mind a lot of, you know, like, the, the idea that people survive as long as they do is very, very recent, historically speaking. You know, the, if, you, if you as a king and queen only have one son, you risk that son dying before he's old enough to have an heir that can take over for, you know, for him. And then you no longer have a, a line, you know, so, er, yeah. Unless you let one of the one of your daughters rule, if you have daughters, and sadly, a lot of royal families throughout history have not allowed that. Despite all the evidence that you know, a lot of the the when when a lot of the most important you know discoveries in in history were actually either entirely or you know, either entirely discovered by women or women made significant, um, what's the word? They had a significant part to play in, in discovering it. But yeah, you know, that's why a lot of royal families have had multiple sons. But yeah, you know, basically the, the, then you can't also have a, a meritocracy. As far as, you know, as far as it's been established in these first two episodes, there's nothing that a regular citizen can do to become royalty. You know, you're either, yeah, you're, you're well, the, yeah, um, um, the men in the royal line grow up to be kings or maximus, and then, you know, I guess, I, I don't know if Medusa, I forget if they, because I did notice that there was, oh, no, wait, yeah, I guess, yeah, because it's because I saw a, a king and queen on the MDB cast list for the first episode. I guess those were Black Bolt's parents in the flashback, maybe. Anyway, uh, it's, yeah, it's possible that Medusa is a regular citizen, though I'd be surprised if she was actually a lower class. Like, historically, the, there are royal families that literally preferred incest to the, the, um, to, to procreating with 
for to to a royal person procreating with a, a poor person, which you know there was a while where you know some of these poor people because of a lack of infrastructure, you know, yeah, they they were not as they they could not frequently bathe, for example, and and you know there a lot of modern medicine you know yeah did not exist at the time they had so you know they would they would carry certain diseases and such but even so you know incest yeah obviously a problem and that actually is why you know there are certain royal families where people were like oh their their skin is so white yeah that's not actually you know obviously it doesn't have to be a bad sign if you're like an albino or something you know, and and some people just struggle to to even even if they're out in the sun, they they just can't quite develop a tan. But no, some of these people, it's some some of these royal royalty, it's it's because of incest, and that they never left. They were always inside. You know, that isn't actually a good thing. That's that's actually very very unhealthy. Anyway, um, but yeah, you know, you can't both have a meritocracy and be ruled by a, a royal family. You know, here in Denmark, we do technically have uh, a king and queen, but they don't have the the political power. Uh, you know, the that is in the hands of our prime minister, and they're you know, yeah. Which yeah, it it's Maximus wants to be king. He's not vying for prime minister or president or something. So the king has the power. Ergo, not a meritocracy. Like it, yeah. It it is kind of hilarious when when conservatives try to to make conservatism conser yeah conservatism look better than progressivism. Like, ah, oh, look at this guy. He's against meritocracy. Yeah, it when they're when they've established it's not a meritocracy at all. Like they literally in episode one, it was like you know, oh, this guy doesn't have special powers. To the mines with him, just yeah, you know, because because that is the the like the the yeah. I think I've made my point. Moving on, yeah, and and you know, you have the the irony of, you know, as Maximus is preaching freedom, we see that Black Bolt is in prison. But that wasn't Maximus's fault, though. That was Black Bolt for not paying attention. Like, and, and you could easily have had, like, a thing of, you know, you could have explained it in, in some other way. But, you know, I, I get that, you know, obviously he doesn't have money. See that? Yeah, that's it. That's it's right there. It is literally right in front of you. Instead of him walking away whilst the woman is yelling, "You have to pay for that," like just have you know have yeah have her have her ask, you know, you yes you know suddenly she she you know stops stops and realizes wait you you can you can pay for that can't you? You, I mean, you have money, and and when he hears the word money, he just like shakes his head no, and and like confused and and such. Let's see. I guess that doesn't make that doesn't by itself make him a shoplifter unless he's like also trying to get away. Have him be distracted by a squirrel or something, you know, and and then he runs and she assumes he's a shoplifter. But don't have him walk away while she's saying, you know, like. There's no way he didn't hear her say you have to pay for that, and and like I mean, I assume the the city of Adelan has money. You know that he's not used to paying for stuff, but you know they they must have money. Like the concept of money must like exist as a like. Were they trying to do an Aladdin? Is that what this is like? Cause, cause there you do also have, but that's because she never left the palace before. She doesn't understand how, yeah, how how finance works. You know, I don't know. I just find like, wait, 
does he not no, because there's no reason for him to not know. He's like he's clearly an, an intelligent person. Why would he not care to know something like that? Could he not believe to learn? And yeah, we we end on Aran, you know, coming back. The, the the bit of her like healing that was decently enough done. And, yeah, you know, she gets on, you know, yeah, before she said, I can handle this myself. And, yeah, famous last words, says, you are not the first, you know, antagonist character in, in something to, to say that and be proven terribly wrong. But, but yeah, you know, at the end, she gets on the comm link, back up, send back up. And, yeah. Um, according to MDB Trivia, the title of the episode is a direct reference to the story title of the comic issue Fantastic Four, Volume 1, Number 46, which marked the second official appearance of the Inhuman Royal Family, and this is the second episode, so, yeah, it's not, not bad. That is, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I will cover the very next episode tomorrow, and I'm hoping but not terribly optimistic that the show will improve dramatically.